Hey everyone, Reflected here. Welcome to the next episode of my Mosquito Tutorials. Today I'm going to talk about radios and navigation. The Mozzie has quite a few fancy gadgets for a warbird, and it's worth having a look at them. They're pretty cool once you figure out how to use them, and they add a new layer to the immersion. Now, I'm telling you in advance, I'm not an expert on radios. There are people who make a tutorial about the function of each and every switch and all the theory behind it. This is not one of those tutorials. This is a very high level overview of those systems. Only what you really need to know in order to use them, also in my upcoming campaign. Okay, so here we are flying back to our base. Let's have a look at the radios first. You have this radio here, which is identical to the radio in the Spitfire or other allied warbirds. Super simple. You can turn it off or select any of the four channels, A, B, C, D. These channels are set on the ground and they cannot be changed in flight, where in our case is set in the mission editor. You can set it up in whichever way you like. In my campaign, it will be uh, like channel A to communicate with other aircraft in the wing. Channel B will be mast and tower, ATC. Channel C will be uh, mission control, so the ground controller. And channel D will be air sea rescue. If you played any of my World War II campaigns, you know that um, I like to set up an air sea rescue. Uh, to give you a chance to complete the mission even if you don't make it all the way back to England. Uh, there's something else about this one. These lights are quite bright so when you fly at night they are reflected here on the on the windshield so you can dim the lights like this with this little uh, switch over here. Now it's not very visible because it's still not super dark but when you're flying at night that will be useful. Now, let's have a look at uh, the fancier, more complex radios that are behind the pilot seat. First, we need to power them up using this switch here. But you cannot click it from the pilot seat, so you gotta move over to navigator suite. And from there, it's also a bit tricky, but not this one, that one, not this one, that one. It's the low voltage switch. That's what it's called. And it powers up the radios, but we still can't see them, can't access them. This is an armored headrest, so you want to press this button to fold it back, and now you can access the radios. But first, let's uh, turn on the light here. So what we have here, this is the T1154 transmitter, and this is the R1155 receiver. You use this to transmit messages, you use this to receive transmissions. It's a bit hard to uh, stay in the level of flight while looking backwards. Now about the, the transmitter, uh, it's got way more preset channels than this radio here. So not just four, but a lot more. And it can reach many different frequencies that this one uh, cannot. For now, I don't really see any function that you could that could be useful in DCS because all, if I'm not mistaken, I may be wrong here, but all the stock built-in radio messages are tied to the pilot's radio here. Maybe if the mission designer wanted you to contact someone on the ground on a frequency that is not reachable with this one, and he added a like the condition to the trigger so it only fires if you are set to whichever preset is required maybe then but for now all you need to remember is to switch this to standby mode because if it's off then you can't work with this one either okay let's look at this one it's oh it would be nice to have a pilot here so this is a big old tube radio lots of frequencies that you can reach before you do anything remember to increase the volume all the way because then you won't hear anything and like me you'll be wondering what's wrong with my switchology well nothing it's just the volume 
So you got to crank it up all the way. Then uh, let's tune into the BBC. BBC Home Service, 668 kilohertz. That's on the black scale here. Jeez. So first, you gotta select the black scale with this switch over here. And then, turn the needle to 668. If you turn this knob, the needle moves fast. If you turn this knob, the needle moves slowly. That's your fine tuning knob. Trying not to crash while clicking the button. Six. And now the fine tuning knob. There we have the BBC Home Service. Still a bit of static. Right, maybe better. This is not part of, uh, of the core game by default. Uh, I set it up in the mission editor and this will be available uh, in every mission of my upcoming mosquito campaign. So on longer missions, when it's a bit uneventful, like you're crossing the channel or something, you're more than welcome to tune into the BBC and listen to it. But this radio was installed for greater purposes, not just to entertain the crew. So let's tune into Manston Beacon which is 397 kilohertz. 397, that's on the yellow scale here. So we gotta switch over to the yellow scale. You can't hear the BBC anymore because it's using the yellow scale and now it's tuned to 219 or something. Okay. There. You can hear Morse code. Okay, it's MZN, that's Manston. So now we know that we are listening to Manston. We're tuned into the correct channel. Now we can decrease the volume. We don't need that anymore. And now let's find uh, the source of the signal. You do that by moving this switch back here to the DF, stands for direction finding, and this one to visual. And if you do that, these needles come alive. Basically, uh, the center line, that's where, uh, that's the direction you're flying, and the intersection of the needles, that's the direction you should be flying. So we, you wanna place the center line onto the intersection of the needles. Up, oh, should be good. As you approach the beacon, the intersection will move up the center line, and as you overfly the beacon, the needles will collapse momentarily. It's up to you to set the scale as in what constitutes far and close with this knob here, the meter amplitude. All the way up, the needles are way up. All the way down, needles are intersecting way down. Set it in a way that's convenient to you. Also, if you're still far from the beacon and you just want a general direction, uh, then this switch is the sensitivity switch. It should be in low. But if you want more precision, switch it to high and you can make more minute corrections. That's it. There's a different way to find the source of the signal, and that is by switching this to the figure eight. Let's increase the volume because we'll need that. And you reach back here, unlock the antenna. Why can't we hear it? Wait a second. Figure eight. Oh, we can't hear it because if you turn the antenna, the strength of the signal will change. And wherever, whichever direction, the strength of the signal is the weakest, like now, that's the direction uh, you should be flying in order to reach uh, the beacon. So not the strongest signal, but the weakest signal. 
but this is not very accurate and I'd much rather be using the needles. Now let me show you how to set up a beacon uh, on any map you like. Here we are in the mission editor. This is Manston. Um, I'm gonna switch to satellite view because that's how you can make sure you don't place your ground unit onto a tree or a house or something. It's more detailed. So I'm using uh, Willis Jeep, but I'm pretty sure it works with different ground units as well. So you place it wherever you like. I placed it uh, here just before the runway threshold. And you click here, Advanced Waypoint Actions. And you need two of them in this specific order. The first one is perform command set frequency. You select like the frequency. Uh, I chose uh, 397 kilohertz, which is 0.397 megahertz, AM modulation, and the strength of the signal. It's totally up to you. And then the second task, perform command transmit message. Here you can select any sound files. Uh, it works with WAV files and OGG. OGGs are much smaller files, so I prefer those. So I made this OGG file. It's the Morse code that you heard, uh, MZN for Manston. There are several websites where you can enter text and download it as a Morse code, uh, as a WAV file or something. So plenty of those, you can use them. Or you can select a Bon Jovi song whatever you like, any sound files. Just don't forget to check this one, loop, because you want the message to keep repeating on and on. If you forget to check it, it will be played once and then never again, and then it's not gonna work as a beacon. So make sure this one is checked. Now let's have a look at the A1271 uh, beam approach system. It's basically a prehistoric ILS. And because we don't have ILS on the channel map, and I'm not aware of any way you can set it up yourself in the mission editor. If you are, let me know in the comments. So I had to move over to the Caucasus map because here we have built-in ILS, like Batumi here has the ILS frequency of 110.3, and the runway heading is 126 degrees. So we have our Mozzie here set the player and you click over here radio presets here you can select the frequencies for uh, channel a b c and d and just below that uh, you can select the beam approach frequency so 110.3 110.3 you cannot change it in flight so whatever is set on the ground or in the mission editor you're stuck with it uh, for the mission let's check it out Okay, here we are, and the weather is awful. We cannot see anything. How are we going to land? Let's turn on the beam approach with this switch over here. I'm sure you expected needles. So you were talking about ILS, but all you got were Morse codes. Well, that's too bad. Let's make it a little louder with this volume knob, just because it's not annoying at all. So the way it works, is that two signals are transmitted from each side of the runway in a very narrow band. One is transmitting dashes, so beep, beep, long ones, and the other one is transmitting dots, beep, beep, beep. And where they intersect, those two transmissions intersect, then these dots and dashes melt together. They overlap and merge into a continuous tone. And that's when you're on center line. See, as I'm moving to the left, so now the dashes are dominating. We are too far right from the center line. But as we're approaching the center line, it's melting together into continuous stone. Let's decrease power here. You can hear the landing gear uh, horn. I'm gonna lower the gear uh, to get rid of that. Continuous tone, we're on center line. But as we overshoot the center line, 
the dots are starting to dominate. Let's drop 15 degrees of flaps. Uh, gear down to get rid of the sound. See, I can hear dots. That means I'm too far left from the center line. So we've got to turn back. Runway heading is 126. So I'm gonna add like 20 degrees to that. And wait until you can hear a continuous tone. That's how I know I'm on center line. Let's get rid of some altitude as well. starting to become a continuous stone but the dots are still dominating so I'm still too far to the left I want like 600 feet of altitude we're over the sea so that's fine okay it's becoming continuous still hearing dots this thing does not provide glide slope information only center line but hey it's 1944 Okay, continuous stone, let's turn to one to six. You have to play it by ear, get it? I'm still hearing dots very faintly. So I'm gonna turn to the right ever so slightly. Or maybe not ever so slightly, but a bit more. Approaching at 500 feet, 150 miles per hour, so I can drop full flaps as soon as we see uh, the runway. At this point, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm hearing anymore. I think it's a continuous tone. Maybe I'm hallucinating, but I'm still hearing dots, so let's turn right. Oh yeah, definitely. As you get closer, uh, the margin for error is becoming smaller as well. Oh, there's the runway. Okay, dropping full flaps. Cutting the throttle. Bit of a slight slip here, get rid of some speed and altitude. 120, five. Okay, level out, got the throttle, three point attitude. Uh, not really, but we're down. Now let's get rid of the sound, thank you very much. So you have to be a little creative with, with the glide slope, uh, but it helps you approach the runway from the right direction. Again, it's not nothing like the modern ILS uh, systems we have, but it's still better than nothing. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and managed to learn something new. Again, I'm not a radio expert, so if you have any further info about these gadgets or I said something stupid, please let me know in the comments. Also, don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date about B for Victory, my upcoming mosquito campaign. Stay tuned, see ya!